Got a cubby, you don't get a PA nit. Them PA boys who you cease play with. Drop it in the cart and at least play six. You go and cherish them joints on some keepsake shit. Got a cubby, you don't get a PA nit. All kind of flavors is what we stay with. And compliment the shine so that we stay lit. Just what you need to complete great fits. Yeah. When it comes to the hats, Gully got you covered. The nits is the shit. You gon' drop all the others. Word the mother. Once you discover the comfort, you gon' be like, yo, my brother. Fuck a beanie, unless it's seagull, it's a wrap. The mother hats really a lie, you fit a cap. It's a holiday gift, the joy we give is drip with more color than Roy G. Biv. Never basic, even got the patterns. You'll shine like lanterns in the cut like caverns. Whether you're hustling, thugging, or loving simple life, no pilfering. Hit gully, he'll get you right. Got a cup yeah. the dome, get a PA nit. Them PA boys who you cease play with. Drop it in the cart and at least play six. You go and cherish them joints on some keepsake shit. Got a cup of your dome, get a PA nit. All kind of flavors is what we stay with. It complement the shine so that we stay lit. Just what you need to complete great fits. Yeah. PA nit. The most electrifying fashion accessory in the world today. Get yours today at therealdribble.com. Peace. You ready, Nick? Let's get him. Play my song. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube, The Real Gully TV. Hit the top bell so you get the notifications. Truck drivers, what up? What up? Glad everybody's safe. None of my truck drivers was on that bridge in Baltimore. Time flies in frontier. Moved our boot first. Now I'm done here. I went on a motherfucking run here. Yeah. Blood, sweat, and tears, gully. All Straight to the business. Suckers kill my man and they gon' pay for what? Alright. Uh, I came here to discuss a couple of things, so I'll go from the top. The situation in Baltimore, um, condolences to anybody who may have lost their life. As y'all all know, the trending story in the world right now, in addition to Puff Daddy, I call him Puff Daddy, I'm from the old school. Um, the, the, the bridge in Baltimore, uh, allegedly uh, um, a freight liner, lost power. And hit one of the supports and collapsed the whole bridge. I seen the footage. I posted the footage on Instagram and on YouTube. It don't look right to me. It looked like an orchestrated demolition. I mean, my vision ain't blurry. That's just my personal opinion. The way it, it collapsed, it just folded up like Lego blocks, man. That shit kind of looked it like the fucking towers. Looked like the towers, didn't it? Looked as strange as hell to me. But, um, yeah, that's something that is going on in the world. In addition to... Homeland Security raiding two of uh, Puff Daddy's homes, one in Los Angeles and one in Miami, for alleged sex trafficking or ongoing investigation related to sex trafficking. I wasn't looking forward to this. I grew up on Puff's music, went to his concerts, da 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 da. But you know, the type of energy you put out into the world, you're gonna get back. You can count on that. So uh, they on his ass right now. Last I heard, he was in Antigua, I believe. I guess when you have a registered private jet in America, they have a GPS system attached to it. So people was literally following him wherever he had in this fucking um, PJ. But um, and he hasn't been charged yet. Based on what I've seen with these last couple of high profile investigations, Donald Trump, they raided his house. They came back within two months and charged them. Keefe D, they raided his house in Vegas. Within two months, they came back and charged them. So this probably can be the beginning of the end for Diddy. He put himself in a wild situation, man. Um, nigga got all the money in the world. Probably can get all the pussy in the world. But he got this deviant freak shit with him. You know, the music industry is devilish. A lot of the participants is devilish. And I'm about to talk to y'all about the devil right now. Taj Mahal, Taj motherfucking Mahal, you creep, I caught you, I didn't catch you, it was brought to my attention, I want you to know that your peers busted you, because I don't follow you on Instagram, so someone who was following you brought it to my attention, everybody know how I feel about half a mil, that's my favorite rapper, everybody know this, 
my favorite rapper. If you go to my Instagram pages, whenever I'm fresh to death, I'm, my, my music on the, on the post is probably Tough Guy, Fires in Hell, Quiet Money, some shit like that from Half a Mill. Believe that. Everybody knows this. Um, my love for Half a Mill is so public and well known that I met his family. I met his son. His son is an actor. I met a, a merchant who, who um, collaborate with, collaborated with his family to put out a half a mil basketball jersey. They know how I feel about basketball. I was the first one to get that fucking jersey. It's hanging in my wall, on my wall, next to Prodigy's jersey in my studio, right? This afternoon, somebody, it was a group chat. It was, a, it was a, quite a few MCs who took note of this. You stole, you stole a hook. You stole some bars from half a mil and tried to make a song illegitimately. And a lot of people were insulted by it. Like the nervous nigga to do this. Considering the half a mil is dead and he's highly revered amongst the underground and um, the elite MCs in hip hop. Half a mil, if you haven't ever heard of, heard of him. He's most popular for his song that was on the Belly soundtrack. It was called Some Niggas. Some Niggas Blood and Some Niggas Crip. Some Niggas Thugs and Some Niggas is Bitch. Some Niggas Ain't Got Nothing. Some Niggas Rich. That's half a mil. A lot of people know half because of that song. He uh, passed away in 1999. I mean, no, 2003, I believe. The CD that I'm, I'm quoting, it came out in 99. 2003, I believe, he passed away from an alleged suicide i was incarcerated when he passed away and i remember them having a memorial in source magazine where you could send money to his family i sent money to half a mil's family from new jersey um that i was that passionate about it about his music i just love everything about his music he was like the educated street nigga scientist or some shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> like just just out of this world the first time that i um came in contact with half a mil was for one line he was on the end of the firm cd on a, on a song called let your guns bust and he started it off you acquire the knowledge my brain waves cause riots in college i heard that shit i was in prison i said god damn like who the fuck said that you know what i'm saying and he just he just he just ran buck wild on this song. It was the last song on the CD. And that song is probably one of the top songs on the whole CD. It was track 14. It was the last song on the CD. As if, you know, he was a late addition. He was um, someone who obviously had a relationship with AZ, Brooklyn MC. Um, they were on each other's projects. Um, I think another song that Half was on was called Love is Love. And of course, Quiet Money. But I just love this nigga's music, man. Like, nobody has ever just blown me away like that, man. Like, he's so opulent, so intelligent. Like, he he send you to the dictionary. He'll send you to the Quran. He'll send you to the sources, the Torah. Like, you need reference books, you know what I'm saying, to understand what the fuck this nigga is talking about. Um, I've done interviews with other MCs who worked with him, like Nature from Queensbridge. And he just was like, man... I remember standing outside the booth when Half was recording, man, I'm like, man, this dude is crazy, like, you know what I'm saying, That's, there's no other way to describe the shit that came out of his mouth, man, rapid fire, intellect, elegant opulence, you know what I'm saying, this is just in a class by himself, but anyway, Taj Mahal is great god y'all know him as great god he's running around here with a fucking mask on his face he's wearing his fucking mask because he's a goddamn thief that's all he does is steal he still he beats people for verses just all types of creep shit right and i somewhat knew of his activity because it's well known in upstate new york like he be getting niggas that's on the rise niggas that's in their bedrooms and shit record music and shit trying to get on will see this cat and become a fan of his or Acquainted with him somehow, and that's just the beginning of the jokes. He's a well-dressed thief, you know what I mean? Dirty, rotten scoundrel. He tricks motherfuckers. He have on all this fake-ass fucking jewelry, you know what I'm saying? Some of the clothes he has on, it might be real. Some of it, you know what I'm saying? But 
he's a, he's he's one hundred percent. He's a fraudulent motherfucker. Now, his situation with me, everybody noticed. He stole some money from me. I, he ended up, Ancasa ended up retrieving a um a drop that I paid for from this creep motherfucker. He had ran off with my money for like a year. I wasn't gonna tell anybody. I was gonna eventually run into him and fix his motherfucking ass. I ran into him at Ghostface Killer Party, but I had an agenda that night. And not only that, he was with Weebay Hassan Johnson from The Wire, and I'm a big fan of Hassan. And I didn't want that to be me and his first encounter and shit. Me busting this motherfucker's head with a champagne bottle or some shit. So I ate it. Ultimately, my my career started to escalate, and I said, I know what I'm gonna do to this nigga. I'm not gonna fuck with him never again in life. He's barred from Gully TV, right? While this is going on, I'm dealing with everybody else from upstate New York. We getting busy. Everybody getting busy. And I ended up doing a video acknowledging and explain. I was explaining my career, my track record with upstate New York. And I mentioned everybody who was relevant. Edo. Green Double, the Trust Gang, 38 Special, Benny the Butcher, Hemer, um, everybody, uh, Rob Gates, The Cloth, I could be leaving some people, I even named Uwe V, who I never met, and um, Uwap, another, you know, legend from Rochester, but I mentioned everybody, Mugga Valley, because I was working with him in Green Double at the time, I mentioned everybody from Rochester that is relevant, except for this nigga Taj Mahal, I did it on purpose, and it burnt him the fuck up. After this video that I did, I look in my email and it's an email from his management team or whatever asking me, do I want to interview this creep motherfucker, right? I know this motherfucker. He didn't been in my house. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't work with this nigga several times. I didn't pay this nigga to do videography for me. I know him. There's no reason for him to send um, a representative to try to facilitate or arrange an interview between us when we know each other. He probably even has my number, right? Boom. His whole point in doing this is, was because during the course of this uh, upstate New York, let's call it upstate New York week or two weeks, Mugavelli told, told a story about um, him selling cars to 38 Special. And 38 Special ended up selling, selling some cars to Mano and Taj Mahal. He even called him. Taj Mahal, I mean, great God, during the interview, that's what he said, and I laughed, I'm behind the camera, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't gonna say anything, because I know it was burning this nigga up, that he wasn't a part of what I was doing, because he's a very, very integral part of the upstate New York story, hip-hop story, he was a part of a group, a movement called the Senate, left his ass out entirely, right, so, after stealing my money, Ancas ended up getting the drop for me, because Un was running around with him doing shows and shit. This nigga thought that he could come back to my platform after stealing from me. And insulted my motherfucking intelligence. He's in my DM talking about, yo, do you still need a draw? I asked this. This was his way to get back in my good graces after he stole from me. I got an album out. I'm on, second, I'm on my second installment. It's called Pillmatic 2. I got a song on my album with an artist called Knowledge the Pirate Underground nigga who... Is a part of the Pimpire with Rock Marcy. Now I got the song from uh, Knowledge already. It's already been mixed. It's on the album. I thought that it would be dope if I can get a drop from Great God, who's also on the Pimpire, and that would appease me. That would make it so me and this creep motherfucker could continue working at some point, right? The nigga left me on scene in September. Six months later, when this shit go on to go down with Rochester, this punk motherfucker uh, messaged me talking about some, yo, where you want me to send the drop to? The fuck do I look like to you, nigga? I'm not fucking with you, period. And you just insulted me. So my, now I'm about to tell everybody everything about you, everything that you did, what you, the, the money that you stole, and the fact that it was only $250. I know that your jewelry is fake. Niggas with money don't steal $250. That's weed money. That's that's you, that's money for parking garages and shit like that. You dig what I'm saying? So when he did that, I knew that his fucking jewelry was... I knew his jewelry was fake when we went in his studio one day and it was just laying on a fucking table. Like, it, nobody handles real diamonds like that. You know what I'm saying? When we got in the studio, he cut on the lights and it was just laying on a motherfucking table. Some bullshit. I knew it was fake. 
So, you know, I never said anything, but I'm telling y'all now about this creep-ass nigga, right? After I exposed this creep-ass nigga, there was people who, of course, they always side with the rapper. They like, fuck the money that he took from me. They always side with the rapper, you know what I'm saying? Trying to win favor with the rapper. Today, some other MCs who care about the culture sent me a DM. It was a group chat. It was several MCs. All from this same pocket, this underground pocket. And they laughing and shit like that. Like, yo, look at your boy and shit. Check this out. I hit play and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. He stole a half a minute. I thought it, I thought he was going to just steal the whole fucking verse. But it, yeah, he basically stole a whole verse and turned it, to, turned it into a hook. Right? And I couldn't believe that he had the audacity to do this. And furthermore, it was furthermore insulting because... I have a relationship with half a mil's family. His son follows me on Instagram. His son is a rapper. I mean, his son is a rapper slash actor. I, he, I believe he was in a BMF series, his son. So his son is still out here active. And he didn't just stole this nigga song, robbing the fucking dead, stealing from the goddamn dead. And he know the protocol. You know that you supposed to go through certain procedures to secure this motherfucking, this, this intellectual property. You feel me? So... Yeah, he didn't he didn't stole and shit. And what I do? Of course, I blew up the spot. I told everybody, if you think that you're gonna steal this fucking song and not compensate half family, you sadly mistaken. You know what this nigga did? This nigga has been telling people that him and half a mil had a relationship. Like that was his man. He did this before all before today. He'd been doing this. He probably been doing this at shows and on tour and shit, because he's a pathological liar and shit, right? As soon as I post the shit, here come the dick riders. Oh, that's his man. He, 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 was, he, he knew, dude, this and this and that. I know motherfucking well this nigga didn't know no goddamn half a mil. And you know what else I know? I know a lot of the low lives, the Brooklyn low lives. I interviewed them. They followed me. Prance Low, Unique Laurent, Rudy Low. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these dudes follow me on Instagram. They even sent me an honorary low life hat. I have it. You know what I'm saying? Love and loyalty. Marcus Garvey Village and all of that. I know the whole history, right? And I know the Taj Mahal had nothing to do with this shit. He wasn't around these niggas, period, right? But he's he's been trying to put out a narrative that him and half a mil had some type of relationship when it's 100% false. He's never been around this nigga in his life. He's never spent no time with this nigga. They never did no music together. None of it, none of this shit, the whole idea of him and half a mil being around each other, it don't add up mathematically, chronologically. It don't add up, right? So boom, when I blow up the spot, like I said, half a mil family follow me. His son followed me. They sent me a half a mil basketball jersey to hang in my studio. They know how I feel about him, right? Soon as I post that shit, here come, here come the dick riders talking about. No, that was that's his man. Da, 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 da. We got that. We got that corrected right away because all of his real friends from Brooklyn, most of them low life niggas, like the guys I mentioned, they in the comments, they like, no, no, he wasn't around us. He's never been around us. That's a lie. You know what I'm saying? Now let's talk about this compensation. Because you should be paying for this shit. You should be paying for this theft. Unique Loren, shout out to you. He started tagging all the half a mil's real comrades. A lot of these guys is Brooklyn rap lanches. Uh, some of them that I recall seeing in there was Tech from Boot Camp Click and Steel. And niggas that was around that, grew up in that Brooklyn low life Decepticon era and shit. He tagged them niggas. And they all are a witness to this shit now. So now you can't lie. And the people that you told that lie to, that you and half was cool or y'all was buddies or y'all was friends or that was your man. They refuted it right away. They said this dude wasn't around us. Matter of fact, who the fuck is he? You feel me? I'm going to tell you who he is. He's Taj Mahal. He used to be with the Senate. Now, I'm going to tell you about this Senate shit, how this shit came into play, right? Joel Santana and Uncasa was buddies. They from 155th. And, and I forget which part of Harlem and shit, but 155th, right? Boom. According to history, this has been spoken of online. Santana had weight at a point in time when he first came on the scene. They was in uh, Syracuse. 
pumping. So you got artists from upstate New York who already had verses from Ancasa from the time he spent upstate New York, like 38 Special. There's different people that already worked with them, right? Because Taj was living in Syracuse, if these niggas got the weight and he know the town, he can go and broker the deals and, you know, get little PC and make it appear like he active, but he's not the guy. He's standing next to the guy, right? Boom. This is how I found out about the Senate. I was on the run one time around 2007 or some shit, 2007, 2006. I was on the run. And this is when I first started to, you know, try to fuck with editing video footage for myself because like I said I was on a run I'm trapped in the crib with a, with a, with all the time in the world to try to edit my own footage because the niggas that I was paying they was treating me like shit working at their own speed I had to get the fuck away from them one of my baby moms gave me an old hard drive right I went and go buy I went to go buy a, 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 a fucking mouse and a keyboard from some motherfucking where and a big ass monitor looked like a fucking refrigerator and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is back, damn near, we just getting out of the dial up stages, right? I don't know what's in this hard drive. All I know that I'm hoping that it has Windows Movie Maker because that's what I started out editing video footage with. And it did have it, right? And when I went and scrolled through the documents, when I plugged this motherfucking hard drive up to, up to the computer, it got Wi Fi now, right? All of the artwork started to appear from all of the songs that was downloaded into this motherfucking hard drive. So when I plugged it up into Wi-Fi, all I'm seeing is G unit, G unit, G unit, D block, that piff, that piff, that piff, dip set, dip set, dip set, dip set, dip set. I'm like, wow, look at all this goddamn dip set material. Like, and they was like the kings back then, right? So I'm like, damn, like somebody, whoever she got this hard drive from, her little brother, I don't know where she got it from was download music. I sent these Dipset Eagles all through this shit, right? When I started to hit the files, they open up. It wasn't just Dipset. It was minimum Dipset. It was just a little Dipset, Little Purple City. But most of it was a group called the Senate. And they had the Dipset Eagles next to them. So you would think that these niggas was a part of the diplomats, right? Boom, I start to listen to the music. And sure enough, it's these niggas from Syracuse, New York, called the Senate. Now, at the time, I didn't know his relationship, Todd's relationship with diplomats and all of that. It just appeared, based on what was in his hard drive, that the Senate was probably like an offshoot of the real Harlem diplomats, like Purple City or something like that. But that wasn't even the case. They just, the dip, the dip set just happened to be in vogue at the time. And back then, if you could put that dip set eagle on the front of a DVD, that shit was sold. If you could put that dip set eagle on your mixtape, it was sold. It almost didn't even matter what the fuck was on the mixtape. Motherfucker was going to buy that shit and listen to it because of this dip set eagle. And that's what the nigga Taj did. Tried to attach himself to the diplomats, to the Harlem diplomats. He did. And at this time, he was trying to pass himself off like he was from either the either Harlem or the Bronx. I think it was the Bronx because he has a relationship with Luca Brasi. I don't know the history of it. I know that he know all of them and they know him, right? Fast forward a few months, him and Joel's fall out. Joel's expose him and tell everybody the real truth. And Todd ended up making a song called Say So, where they kidnapped Joel Santana and all of this and uh, made this video with um, this rapper who was in the Senate named Thump Mendoza. He was hard. He passed away. He got killed a couple of years ago. Anyway, um, right as I found this, this is going into the thisis50.com era and the, the YouTube era. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, trans, I'm, I'm making my transition from a DVD brand to an online brand. I get an email one day from this nigga Taj Mahal and he wants me to put out this video of him tying up Joel Santana. I seen the video. I told him, I said, fam, I can't touch this video. I, I can't touch this video. Why? Because I had all intentions of filming 
diplomat rappers. I was very a big, big fan of that whole movement. I didn't even know them niggas yet. I hadn't encountered none of them. Nothing. I just knew I wasn't going to slam the door on my brand like that for this nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, once the diplomat shit wasn't around anymore, the Senate, of course, fragmented, and it, Instagram comes. I'm working with an artist named Skibo Debo, and I'd have met Skibo through Uncasa. Me and Uncasa had been to Miami. We didn't been to North Carolina, CIAA. We moving around, developing a relationship, right? I ended up getting in a situation with Haitian Jack. I'm, I got the Haitian Jack documentary and I needed some videography work. I needed somebody to film me. At the time, this nigga Taj Mahal, he wasn't a rapper. He was passing himself off as a video director under a brand called Finally Focus Films, right? This is what he's doing. And I seen that Finally Focus Films Instagram page and I seen the little video clips that was on there. So I'm like, okay, this is a media brand. I reached out, come to find out it's it's the, it's Taj Mahal. I'm like, damn. So I ended up scheduling me a shoot and paid him to film me. You, it's a portion of my Haitian Jack Speaks that finally focused films Taj Mahal actually filmed. While I was up there, I'm talking to him about his rap career and why why you why you don't rap no more and all of that. I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. And um, he didn't have nothing going on at all. And I was telling him how much juice I have. And how much juice I'm about to have because I got this Haitian Jack shit going on and I had some other things going on. But I'm telling him, fam, if you want to rap, I can help move you back in a position. You dig what I'm saying? He ended up calling Sammy G, who was another rapper in the Senate. And I filmed Sammy and I filmed Taj Mahal. He didn't have nothing to talk about at the time. So I filmed him about starter jackets. We was talking about starter jackets or some shit like that. Because like I said, he had zero going on. Right? Boom. Years progress, years progress. The rest of the fucking upstate New York is taken off. Trust Gang takes off. Blew past the Senate. The niggas from Buffalo take off. Blew past the Senate. And it was other niggas from upstate New York. Blew past the Senate. This nigga didn't have nothing going on. Right? Um, For whatever reason, he couldn't... Buffalo wasn't gonna fuck with him. He couldn't... He couldn't dick ride his way into that. And the niggas from Rochester, they not going to fuck with him because he originally spent some time in Rochester after he moved to the East Coast from Iowa. Because he's from Iowa. Taj Mahal, great God, he's from Iowa. After he moved from Iowa, he came to Rochester. But Rochester didn't have anything going on at the time. So he ended up going to Syracuse and establishing the Senate and establishing his identity as if he was a Syracuse nigga. And because of that, the rock nigga is not going to fuck with him, right? So he's out on Trust Gang. He's out on uh, the Black Soprano family because they kind of like keep that shit Buffalo. What do he do? He attaches himself to the next great entity that's in this pocket of underground lo-fi hip-hop music that they that is becoming popular that's rock marcy that's somebody who they who is credited with um creating this wave this resurgence of underground hip-hop music like everything that you're seeing now sd nag um griselda just all of these new boom back boom back Boom bap, fly backpack style type of rappers. Rock is credited as the goat or the creator of it, right? Boom. Unbeknownst to most people, Rock did some music with Griselda at a point in time. I forget the name of the song, but it's black and white. It's a black and white video. And it was dope. It was him. It was Rock. It was What's I Gun and it was Conway. It was dope. I liked it. But after that, you didn't see them too much work anymore, work together anymore. And as this was happening, Griselda started to take off. And you would hear little things in the underground, you know, ear hustling, hear niggas talking. And they were saying that Rock didn't fuck with Griselda no more because they were still in his style. They were still in his wave. This is my understanding of it. Y'all play this shit back if y'all got it fucked up so you can get it right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. 
Rock didn't, he don't, because of allegedly stealing of styles or whatever, Rock don't fuck with Griselda and all of that. And Rock ended up being a very, very, very big deal. He has an esoteric uh, following underground. It's, it's a dope movement. What he got going on is just, it's immaculately fly and it's attractive. And this nigga Taj Mahal, what does he do? He attaches himself to it. He's a slick motherfucker, man. He attaches himself to it. He's very clever. He's very tactful, but he's a fucking creep. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. While this is going on, Todd starts to, you know, hop his ass into the into the new upstate New York movement. Stove God Cooks. These is all the guys that's popping. Rock Marcy, Stove God Cooks. Uh, Rock's not from upstate, by the way. Rock Marcy, Stove God Cooks, Knowledge the Pirate, Griselda, ST Knack. You know what I mean? I think Amir Rashad. I can't remember all these dudes' names. But Taj wiggles his way on into this shit and gets accepted by Rock, Mar Rock Marcy, who establishes something called the Pimpire. I've paid this bitch ass nigga Taj Mahal. I also formatted his DVD. He has a DVD called Bars. It's about um, upstate New York. It's about Buffalo uh, Bars, Buffalo, Albany, Rochester, and Syracuse. That's what Bars stand for. He brought that DVD to me and I formatted it for him and put it into chapters so he could put it on a DVD and sell it. I did that in my house. He brought it to me. He brought it to my house. When he asked me, how much do I owe you for this? I said, don't worry about it, pimp. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about nothing and shit. I, I just wanted to show him that I was a computer whiz. And ultimately, he would come back to me for some more work, right? That was my intentions. I ended up seeing him somewhere moving in this body and I seen him around Stove God Cooks who I ended up finding out was from Syracuse allegedly. I guess that's where he's from. So I hit this nigga up and I said, yo, I asked him, could he get me a drop from Stove God? He said, yeah, I asked him how much it costs. Now, when I asked him this, I would have gave him whatever the price was because I wanted it for my platform. He told me $250. I'm like, shit, that ain't nothing. I sent it to him right away. Days turned to weeks, turned to months. I'm asking this nigga, yo, fam, what's up with my drop? Da, 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 da. He ignored me. He don't talk to me no more. He didn't follow me. All this type of creep shit. So I start sending um, cash app requests for him to refund it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he'll get the request saying pay this back. He ignored the request and all of that. So now you're on the shit list. And when I shared this with everybody that this nigga stole from me, other artists from different parts of the country started coming, coming to the to the light saying yo he did this to me he did this to me but everybody will side with the rapper and shit because they want fucking sh tickets to the show and pictures and all of that type of shit and um that's how they handle it today i announced this shit let me tell you how these niggas be moving today i announced this shit that he stole from half a mil everybody who professed to have a relationship with half a mil says something right i even tagged rudy low this is somebody who knows about my affinity and my attraction and you know me just being a, a big half a mil fan he know this and i know this you know whenever he posts half a mil i'm right there in the comments i share the shit whenever i post half a mil he's right in my comments commenting and shit so when i tagged him today he didn't say anything I'm like, man, this shit is crazy and shit. The rest of the low life niggas is it they they they're livid. They like, man, you got he got to pay for this shit. Like they tag another low life niggas. Rudy Low ain't said nothing. I said, watch me go to this nigga page and he's following Great God. When I went, yep, sure, sure enough, he's following him and he's not gonna say anything. He's gonna he's gonna act like this nigga didn't just steal from half a mil. Why? Because he wants to be down. He wants to be accepted at the next show and shit like that. And I was very, very, very disappointed in you, Rudy. I was I was shocked like a motherfucker because you're somebody, I believe during our interview, we spoke about half. But now that half is being robbed in front of his family, you don't have anything to say. And this is a lot of the fake shit that you see going on in this hip hop industry. Anyway, I posted it. Everybody knows. And this, this shit needs to stop. 
This shit need to stop. This fraudulent shit, it needs to stop. You can cover up yourself. You can cover up being a creep all you want. But gradually, the real you will show. It will, it will expose you. You will, you will expose yourself. Just like this shit happened with this nigga right here. Right? You got niggas jumping in my comments talking about him and half was brothers and all of this type of shit. For no reason. They don't got no proof, no nothing. The niggas that really roll with him like, nah, 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 nah. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? And he thought that this was something that he was going to be able to get away with. What don't come out in the wash will come out in the rinse. I told y'all this motherfucker was no good. I told y'all that. And now you see him stealing from a motherfucker that's deceased. And he's telling people, allegedly, that that's his man. That was his friend. They had a relationship. If so, pay his family they publishing. If it's so, make sure to have get compensated for the shit that you stole. If that's your man. If you cool with him. If you fuck with him. If you love him. Why aren't you compensating his family for this shit that you stole? You know what I'm saying? There's no way. That, there's no way. To look the other way and act like this ain't what it is. You know what I'm saying? And you got grown ass men. You got grown ass men. Pretending like this shit didn't happen. Like this shit didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Creep ass nigga. My nigga. Taj Mahal. Great God. You ain't gonna be able to do nothing. You ain't gonna be able to do nothing this illegitimate. You ain't gonna be able to do nothing that ain't right and exact without me jumping on your ass. Without me jumping on your ass. This shit that's going on right now. This shit wouldn't even happen. Nobody else cares about half a mil like that. Nobody wasn't going to say nothing. But me. Because you took from me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm blowing up the spot. That's why I'm blowing up the spot. People need to know. Creep motherfuckers like you exist in this business. And eventually. Rock Marcy will start to. Peep your fucking style. Your character. And understand what type of person you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can put a mask over your face, nigga. You can put on a thousand motherfucking fake chains, fake ass knockoff designer. It still ain't gonna cover the fact that you's a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? And y your character reflects this. Your character reflects this. And now all of a sudden, you put now song, you wanna put out a song talking about what you say? El Elohim giving me the guidance told me lead them 85 is alone blend with the wise men you ain't wise you ain't God body or none of that shit it will be reflected in your character stop it what you trying to do is trying to corral some support from five percenters Lord Jamar who you be around who be making beats I believe he produced the avant-garde record with you on Rome streets you trying to gather some support and that's why you talking this God body shit right now. Don't do that. Go back to rapping about cocaine, bricks, guns, and destruction like you've been doing. Go back to that because that's what you've been doing. Not until now, all of a sudden, you talking this righteous shit when you're not righteous. Righteous men don't steal from black men. My nigga. Righteous men don't steal from nobody. You a piece of shit. You known for stealing. You known for stealing. And you known for stealing from niggas. You known for stealing from black people. So you can't be, the, the shit that you trying, the message that you trying, this chameleon shit, it's not going to fucking work. Because it, it's, it don't agree with your actions. You feel me? It don't agree with your actions. All of a sudden, you wants to talk about math and all of that shit. You ain't been representing no fucking half a mil, nigga. You ain't been representing no half a mil. You talking about, you got motherfuckers thinking y'all had a relationship. If y'all had a relationship, pay his fucking family for the content that you fucking stealing. You know what I'm saying? Pay, pay, pay his fucking family. Them niggas is online. His family is online. You stole a hook. Based on me listening to Max B talking about the construction of a song, the nigga that's on the hook makes all the money. He makes the song because the, in between, all you hear is verses from a motherfucker. The nigga on the hook is who you hear the most. Am I right, Nick? Am I right? Right. Okay. Boom. So what you trying to do is steal. You, that's what you're doing. You're stealing from a mother. You're a fucking grave robber. You're stealing from a motherfucker that's deceased. That's what you're doing. And you think ain't nobody going to say nothing because he's deceased. I blew up the spot. If, you, if anybody can do what the fuck you did, everybody that's listening to this, go steal this hook. Yo, yo, what up, yo? Time is running out. It's for real, yo. Let's connect politic ditto. Go do that. And put it on a fucking song. Since you since you can just steal motherfucking shit and make songs, go do that. 
or go take something from Biggie or take something from Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Go take something and steal and create another motherfucking song. Stop dick riding. Stop dick riding. Create something organically. Nothing that you do is going to be blessed. That's why you in a situation that you in. Because you ain't no fucking good. Look how bad I caught him. Look how bad I caught him. Look how bad I caught him. He stole that shit. He stole half a mil's fucking bars. Used them for a hook and tried to put that shit out. Talking some fucking God body shit. You ain't righteous, motherfucker. You're not righteous. Righteous niggas don't steal. Where's the equality? Let's practice the mathematics. Where's the equality for his family? You're stealing. You're stealing from a motherfucker that everybody know was civilized. Everything that came out of his motherfucking rap, out of his mouth, was fly shit, big money, and mathematics. You dig what I'm saying? And you think you gonna repackage that shit and sell it to this generation like it's yours? Motherfucker, that's how people get lost. That's how people's legacy get lost. Because motherfuckers don't want to get a credit to who it rightfully fucking belong to. And you not gonna do that shit. You ain't gonna do nothing illegitimate while I'm on this motherfucker. While I'm online, you ain't gonna do nothing wrong, my nigga. You ain't gonna do nothing wrong. And ultimately, I want you up out of here. Because you ain't no good. The nerve are you trying to take from me? The nerve are you... The nerve of you bitch ass nigga. You don't even know who you fucking playing with. I wasn't always fucking gully TV clown. You ain't even got good character judgment. I used to hear Easy E, he had this song when he said, he said, he's something like, rob from the rich, hang with the poor. This bitch ass nigga steal from the poor and go try to hang around, around a bunch of rich niggas. This nigga, this creep ass motherfucker be stealing from motherfuckers who trying to come up. And then go put on his fake ass jewelry and shit and go stand next to some niggas that's really putting in work. Some niggas that's really, really relevant. Let me tell you how much of a creep this motherfucker is, right? This song, it's on my Instagram, at IamGullyTV underscore. This song that he stole from Half a Mill, it's playing on Instagram, right? And it's a picture, it's a still, it's a thumbnail for it. You can't even see him. All you see is Rock Marcy. Because that's what he's selling. That's what he's selling. Relationships. That's what he's selling. The big. Go look at the picture. Go look at the song on my page. What's the first thing you see? Rock Marcy. Somebody that's popping. You could hardly even see Taj. You could hardly even see him. He's not even. He's hardly even in the fucking picture. You feel me? So you could see his deliberate deception, deceit. You can see that shit. You can see that shit, and that's something that's common in this game. Niggas be trying to attach themselves to motherfuckers through a picture. Through a picture. I understand. I was in that position at a point in time when I first started out. I value pictures next to motherfuckers. You dig? I ain't got to do that no more. You know why? Because I'm the star in the picture now. I ain't got to do that shit no more. Period. And you got this grown 50 year old ass nigga stealing. You know what I'm saying? And dick riding to be relevant. If you wasn't affiliated with Rock Marcy, you'd just be a fucking clown with a mask on. Mask off, motherfucker. That's all I got to say. Nick, play my music. Let me get up out of here. Pillmatic 2 on the way. Go to go to the real dribble.com and get knitted. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here outworking these niggas, putting myself on, and I ain't steal nothing. Pussy ass nigga. I'm done. They gon' stun the enemies, homies gone, all we got is limit guy I'm selected where I get my energy Smiling on the outside, on the inside, shit be killing me Knowing that the love fake, that's why I keep it still in me Riding with the silly crack, boy I did it big, no gorilla black I'm still in the trenches where the killer's at, trying to give them hope